Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to Quest Street War. I'm your host, Mr. Mook11, which we're playing as a preview build of uh, the Realm of Curia. But at this point, most of the campaign content is done, um, but we got a few things left, such as down the artery of the interior. The lone riverboat that steamed downward was in a miserable state, struggling to stay afloat even as its crew, what few of them still remain, did all they could to keep it going. The jungle seemed to reach out for them, the cacophony of birds and insects and animals gone to leave only the weak coughing of their engine, and far behind them, the sound of your horns. Come on, come on, come on, the me mechanic coax the engine frantically. Come on, sweetie, you can do it. Don't die on me now, please. Her voice broke out as she looked out the engine room towards the back of the ship where two guards hunched behind the boat's armored gunwale. They were both clutching the rifles with shaking hooves, occasionally peeking out from behind it. Is it still after us? I don't know, I don't know. They had been so brave at first. Now, not now, though. No, no, Kieran was brave. I think the horns are coming closer, though. Can't get this thing to go faster? I'm doing the best I can. There's hardly anything of the engine left. Well, if you don't, whatever he was going to say died in his throat, courtesy of the spear that burst through it, pinning his body down to the deck. The other a guard squealed in fear, raising his rifle and firing it towards the tree from which it had come. Crack after crack rippled through the air, only to them be drowned out by the ear-splitting, roaring crash of thunder as the wind picked up from behind the boat. From breeze to gust to gale it rose as a fog poured out among the trees. A concord far behind him, where the river vanished into the jungles. Two burning eyes appeared in the thick fog, eyes that rapidly approached as the wind rose to fever pitch. No, 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 no. Their screams were drowned by another roar as the fog crashed over them. The last thing they heard was a thunder. The last thing they saw was a lightning. Two days later, the charred husk that was once a boat came drifting out of the jungle. Woe betide those who try to reach the heart of the jungle. And the Kieran's burn is next, as we're doing the Fragrance Admiralty, which I believe we read last time. So if you read this again, please go ahead. So we read everything up through here, Defense and Death, and we read even the front, uh, Frontier's Mayor Armed Services and the Wire Lang Detachments, but permanent and Professional, perhaps? The recent reforms to our army are already showing effects. The soldiers are much more effective, well trained, and disciplined than in the past. It's time we finalize the army reforms and truly establish a permanent professional army of the realm. Ooh, Jada Craft, sure. The Kieran's Burden. Major Superior, <coughs> Premier Autumn Blaze, members of the Morning Secretariat, Cypress Snow added to address the chamber. It's with regret that I stand here before you today. As you know, the situation in the far south has turned dire. Our outposts are under attack from the local tribes. There is no mere raids either, but full sieges by an aggressor determined to drive us into the sea. In our efforts to bring the NAKP in line with the Kyrian constitution, we have disbanded most of our military assets. Consequently, we are as of un now unable to protect these outposts, and I must request that the Kyrian army intervene to protect these outposts and bring hostilities to an end. As much as we are sympathizing with your plight, these outposts are in foreign land, are they not? Fern Flair asks, an intervention like what you say are requesting would constitute an invasion of a land that is stated clearly it does not desire your presence. I would understand if you asked for aid in evacuating the region, but aggression of the kind you are proposing would be unprecedented. When Kira came out of the silence, those forces advanced quickly, and there was not one Kira present who could not testify to how hard this time was. Separate Snow looked out across the chamber, yet we persevered and we stand as a great modernizing power in Zebrica. For these tribes who have lived trapped in the past for centuries, who should give them the tools of modernity if not us? You know the challenges that it offers better than any Kieran else, and what greater purpose can Kiria have than to take on this burden of elevating these tribes abandoned by time and craving your instruction? Should we instead abandon them to be dragged back into barbarism by the mistrustful kin, or should we let the world know that Kira is a tutor that does not abandon his students? The morning secretary votes against intervention. The morning secretary votes for intervention. You know what? I want to see what happens. Let's continue reading on and see what happens, because, you know, I want to know. Soldiers of the Lamb. We cannot expect Kyria to forever be safe from the order of the powers in the world sooner or, sooner or later. We we'll have to defend ourselves. We must ensure that it is difficult as possible for our enemies by teaching our soldiers guerrilla tactics and using our homeland to our advantage. Oh. Talagai. Oh, shnikes. Oh, shnikes. Bunch of communists, religious socialists. We're cold in the city. Ooh. Uh, well, I did say I want to see what would happen, so. The Far South Expedition Force, with a slim majority. Uh, this morning, Secretary voted for intervention, and now Kira's armed forces were being scrambled to intervene in the Far South. Time is of the essence, and Autumn Blaze looked down at the two dossiers given to her. Two different plans have been put forth, the question of what should be done. General Hysop Garnet had proposed a full-scale intervention. <laughs> Battle lines were fluid in the jungle, and the tribes knew the latter out, inside out. In response, General Garnet suggested Kyria that leverage his full force to shock the, uh, the tribes into surrendering. Heavy artillery, mechanized assets, and air power would all be deployed to ensure that the tribes would be faced with an overwhelming force far beyond what they could hope to defeat. Faced with a full understanding of the dragon they had awoken, the tribes would realize that their only option was surrendering. This would make the war bloody but short. In contrast, General Coral River argued for more limited intervention where the goal is not to cow the tribes into submission, but to tire them out and reach accord with the local leaders. 
I have inserted the zebra tribes of the far south. In general, river was it Each tribe should be understood as a nation unto itself, and therefore the goal had to be to placate or pacify them one after the other to dissolve the coalition. I'd be drawn on intervention, but when the place restrictions are on forces, but General River was confident it would be the best way to avoid a bloodbath. Autumn Blaze stared down at the dossiers, wondering how it had gone so horribly wrong that this was Kiria's first great foreign venture. It sickened her, but she had no choice. She'd ra or rather, she did have a choice. The one she had to make Kira now, and that was what made her so queasy. General Garnett will be able to end the bloodshed fast. General Hypasset Garnett will be appointed Supreme Commander of the Kirian Force itself. I trust Coral River's expertise. I like full and bloody. It's not bad. Banner Kirian Commander. Oh, that's actually really good. Well, she's also Kieran, so. There you go. Any upgrades? Oh, heat expert. You know what? Why not? Is it super useful? No, but whatever. Um. I'm going to send you guys down south, too. Or, you know, we could just keep them here. But I want to give you at least half of these guys. Because honestly, you're going to need it. The Lost Jungle, eh? I want to see what these divisions are like. They're 8 combat with... Oh, they're militia with recon. Oh, that's not, that's not good. 8 irregular infantry with valiance, huh? There we go. Do do it once just because you honestly probably need it. And I know he needs the Dedic Refiners and whatnot too, but still. Embedding Rebellion in the Secretariat. Uh, to Autumn Blaze from Fern Flare, to Autumn Blaze, the situation in the morning Secretariat is increasingly untenable. So let's assume that a cross caucus alliance by KA, along with a progressive block, and rebels from the RAHP will soon table motion to impose further restrictions on the realm's intervention in the far south. Their proposal will place a time limit on our operations and an opposition will only mount as time passes. Pin uh, Fire tells me that increasing numbers of our own delegates will revolt against party discipline the longer we are bogged down with ourselves. We have left to fall back on what corporate interests and increasingly nebulous appeals that nationalism against nothing but natives are the public enemy or the public is increasingly in favor of. We must, I emphasize, must reach some sort of acceptable, acceptable resolution to the far south until the year's up or will be forced by the Secretary to withdraw regardless of whether the terms thereof are preferable or not. Yours truly. Delegate speaker from Fair and Flair, MMS. Oh boy. Now we're in the south. Description General High South Gardens, the Supreme Commander of the Kyrian Forces South. Can you be any slower moving? Like, come on. Let's get going, y'all. Nice fuel. What am I Oh, Supreme Commander speaks. Can you do that and win? Honorable members, General High South Garnett, the doorkeeper shouting in the chambers, High South Garnett, but. Stroll the podium, uniform and medals shining in the light. He caught to catch his breath and looked onward out to the assembled delegates, members of the Secretariat, honorable ministers. I'm disappointed in this vote. As a proud banner here in the realm, I consider it my prime duty to ensure the realization of an honorable peace in the far south by the conclusion of the military intervention. And that, my dear friends, requires resources and Kieran power. Without Kieran, without material discretion, it's impossible to win any kind of war. And this is, this is what you've all done. You sabotage any chance for a quick resolution of this campaign out of your own fear of bad, bad publicity. You're also scared for your own reputations and careers that you'd rather sacrifice more sons and daughters of the realm on your own, on your own altar of respo respectability. For my part, I'll not let such attitudes become a hindrance to my command and my mandate. I've enjoyed the backing of the ministers and the mi military. I will see this war through to the end, so help me Concord. Or what should you saying? The maximum number of battalions to support com companies, excluding irregular infantry, that we may field in these nations is at 50. Bruh. I mean, they got a crap ton of divisions, though. We don't have political power either. Gains jungle rat. Ooh. You know what? I'm okay with that. Do that one. Command power. Just... Ooh, more offensive breakthrough? That sounds good to me. Should be able to punch a hole through. Wire fencing, concentration cap, occupation law. Oh, that's cool. Can we legally get away with that, I guess? Raise flag. This is going to be extremely dangerous. Reported the Kifor Supreme Commander High South Garnett, this Marxist Stalinist Workers Party Kira to stop 
Drop the Stalinist from name. Given a revolution in politics, a standard elections for the morning secretary and national plenum. Now the MWPK opposes the far south interventions through the filibusters, petitions, and speeches and protests. But not all other members agree to the turn of this reformism. When they changed their name, a small faction split from the main party, retaining the old name and their loyalty to Marxism, Stalinism, now. This is the spinner party bearing the old name of the MSWPK, and that is spreading anti-war defeatist propaganda in the ranks of the Kyrgyz Force. This is what's calling on the Kyrgyz Force soldiers to sabotage their arms or to dis disobey, or purposely misinterpret their commander's orders to be as lackadaisical and cowardly as possible. Why die for corporate profits? This is what's telling the Kyrgyz Force the soldiers to come home safe. This propaganda is having some effect. We're looking for the MSWPK agitators, and we'll arrest them and try them in military courts. The MWPK stated that they do not condone this illegal propaganda, but the MWPK is not condone it either. Can I get soldiers here? I need soldiers here now. Come on. Mandate expires. Formed by a mandate enacted by a morning secretariat. Intervention to protect and Kyrian interests in the far south, DEL, but due to opposition enabled by rebelling RAHP delegates, the mandate will expire by the end of the year. If military goals are not achieved before them, will be forced to withdraw. Mission complete. Defenders of Harmony. Right. Oh, I forgot about this stuff too. And then again, we have no political power now. I don't remember why. Which sucks, but whatever. Should easily be able to defeat these guys. Come on. Primers Admiralty. Air Corps. Huh. You lose so much political power. Holy crap. I see why. Okay. Go home. So I wish I knew about this before we I fully committed to it, like come on. Like why? <sighs> it's incredibly dumb. Come on. Born of the Jungle. I was looking better already. Get out of here too. Come on. Good. Thousand. How much, uh. It's good. It's good. I guess it explains here, too. Um, how much manpower do they have? Probably several thousand. Oh, thousands upon thousands upon thousands. But this debuff. Okay. Okay, we're looking good now. Oh, we need def definitely this one. We should, I wish we had, like, you know, political power. That'd be really nice. Would it not be nice to have political power, you know? Talarayan uh, resistance stiffens. Resistance of the Talarayi natives to military intervention stiffens. Their attacks on Kyrgyz force outposts and trench lands grow bolder, more ferocious, and more vicious. They attack more frequently at night and in greater numbers. The bodies of adopted civilians or Kyrian soldiers lost on the patrol hang limply from noose ends made of tree vines or found impaled on sharpened stakes and pitfalls. 
seems that more and more sections of Talarian society, the decentralized network of the tribes interspersed throughout the military, deep jungles of the far south, are uniting against us a common enemy, the alien invaders from beyond the shores. We should end this war soon, and this is a war, no matter what the politicians of Vermilion call it, lest the natives gain a sufficient strength and confidence in a newfound unity to drive us out of the far south altogether. Your self guardian must pick up the slack. Come on. Alright, so we're here. One, two, three. One, two, three, yeah. This is dumb that you can't have enough divisions. That's really stupid. Well. So be it. That's all we can do. Let's support artillery and everything here. That's militia. Can I convert uh, something over here? Because you guys are a combo with infantry. So. Adventures are uh, so exploration infantry are not great. Militia are not great. National levies are okay. Cause that should allow us to field more, right? Yeah, I want these guys so that's close to the port. Bring two more over. Because we are gonna need them more. Honestly, with you guys, can I have you as native levies? Will that hurt us? It might, but we need numbers down here. And we can do a really good smacking job, but... And I want to go here to here to encircle them too, so... That should be okay, but we made them all levies, right? Because it says irregulars. So... Oh, it's a mountain province too, that sucks. Should be everyone no matter what, still. Do we not have any planes here? What the heck? Come on. Heavy machine guns are nice. Crap, we need those bomb locks now. So does that hurt us more? No, we're fine, yeah. Can I throw one more into? Good. I think we found the way to do it. Let me just hop out here. Just go. Let us go here. Nice. Good. New Army General Staff is good. Meeting with this Autumn Blaze, General Fire Horn, Fire Thorn, uh, Major our Commander of her banner, the banner of the Scented Moon. Or scented moon. Suitable banner in that, that, like most other historic banners, it is mostly transitioned from a military formation to a social, economic, familial clan organization, but still maintains a fighting force commanded by the banner care. The only other banner force which uh, preserves the modern social and traditional military aspects of a banner is the Bloom family's member, Banner of the Star Taurus, and they are definitely not trustworthy. Autumn Blaze annoys General Firethorn as the generalissimo of the Vermilion and Kyrian army. Autumn presents Firethorn with a new uniform, modern, equestrian inspired, official uniform of the generalissimo. That's cool. This is old car, that's good. You go You support him. Good. Thank God. Okay, so we got rid of that one. How are we looking now? Ooh. Yeah, go back. No, I need you to go back. Now. Why, why are you stopping here? Get out of here. Get out. Okay, so this is still too many. Um, here we go. So it's one too many. You can go here to here. Let's division move first. Go. 
This sucks. This really sucks. What's this? Should be able to deliver enough of a punch through here. Come on. Good, as long as I don't move in here, it's good. And there you go, nice. You go here. Oh my god. Help out. Hmm. That's good. We just don't have enough time for this. Go supply delivery. Yeah. Ninety days if we could expand it. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Good. Well, he's learning. High stop is learning definitely. So one, two would be good. Uh, Siege of Vrax. Because we gotta go for encirclements no matter what, so. We're not gonna recover anymore, which sucks. Which means we going like this. Alright, where's my air base? You know, you build air bases and they don't even make them. What the heck? Why do we keep losing political power? Hmm. Your bombs are good, though. Alright, so. I'm gonna keep designing and editing and keep going through this, but uh, we'll also read Modern Drugs of War. Frank Gurren's Expedition, or Enterprise, always been the main supplier of the ships of the Matriarchate. To subsidize it, we can use it to quickly and efficiently create a brand new fleet of modern junks of war. Or junks of war. Soldiers of the land. We're going to carry it forever. Be safe from other powers in the world. Sooner or later, we'll have to defend ourselves. We must ensure it's as difficult as possible for our enemies. We're teaching our soldiers guerrilla tactics and using a homeland to our advantage. Uh, army motorization. Drug streets will tool the transportation of troops and supplies. Unfortunately, there are still lingering effects of the silence. We do not have a, full, a lot of experience with our use for military purposes. <clears throat> Thankfully, our generals believe that those who are coming should be easy to make up for if we give enough a time. Order for nation building. Despite good progress, the native resistance continues unabated due to cultural and spiritual pressure from the local witch doctors that serve as the closest thing to the central authority in these lands. If we are to secure the peninsula, we must break their hold on the populace hold and create a secular leadership for the region. To this end, the coastal tribes that serve as our first contracts or contacts will be empowered and equipped to be entrusted with the task of governance. With the evacuation of the tribes to the previously established safe zones, we'll be able to create new administrative provinces in the secured areas without the risk of dividing the region's demographics over provincial borders long term. We'll be able to lay the foundation for modern administration in these regions through the establishment of institutions such as courts, police stations, and schools whose staff will be trained in Kyria to ensure they're able to take on the task of creating an actual Talarayan state. These provinces will serve as the founding states of a new Talarayan republic founded on secular law and popular enfranchisement. Later to the founding of this new state goes smoothly, the following measures will be taken. Expedited construction of necessary security and administrative infrastructure. The deployment of Talarayan auxiliaries to low-risk areas to accustom their fellow natives to their presence. Surveying and distributing the land among the tribes to ensure equal distribution of resources. While activity in secured zones will henceforth be treated as banditry and dealt with such within the framework of Kyrian military law. The rest of the incarceration of witch doctors present in secured zones until the situation is stabilized. By the order of Care Force Supreme Commander General Hysop Garnett. Law, order, and civilization. Cool. And it gets play, alert, naval combat sound. Cool. Um, so the mandate will expire in 120 days. And we're actually actually doing really, really well. Um, kind of pain in the butt. We've all lost 1,600. We've cut up a lot of the enemies here. And actually, I do know what's going to happen next. Because I might have done this a little bit off screen as well. Um, but, uh, yeah. The Army Air Corps, of course. And what else? 
Oh, we'll do this one next because we can. I want to finish this war off quickly, man, if we can. Okay, you're stuck, which sucks. Can you do that as much? Can you guys go to the capital? So you guys are all moving around. And we got the capital, Tiger's Lair. Oh! Okay, then. We have one artillery. Nice. Well, <clears throat> Deep in the jungles of southeastern Zebrica, the Golden City was for the longest time thought of a thing of a myth. Today, though, this myth has become true. Despite fanatical resistance from the local tribes, the armies of the Vermilion Realm of Kyria have breached the jungles to enter the fabled city. Reports indicate that discipline has broken down among the Kyrian invaders upon the side of the solid gold buildings, and that looting is rampant even as the last natives are defending the central pyramid of the city, where their priests are now even engaged in some kind of ritual. Seems like out of a fairy tale. Oh. Okay, so I did this earlier. Oh! There we go. And we nuked it. Or we nuked ourselves. Um, the tiger's roar. The purpose of the ritual carried out atop the last pyramid of the Golden City became all too clear when the city's dying priesthood completed it. The skies above the city were rent asunder as the city's ancient guardian. The entity only known as the Thunder Tiger came crashing down on it as a storm of lightning visible from hundreds of miles away. The entire city built from the medical gold turned into one massive conductor, and the Kyrian invaders were wiped out as they, uh, as they who dared to sell the guardian's deity pay the ultimate price. We're going to need a bigger gun. Masters of the Atom. We've used the first... World's first nuclear weapon, putting us firmly in the lead uh, of the current arms race. Our men's efforts have paid off, and for now the world will have no choice but to marvel at our power. They might say, uh, they might someday match us, but we'll have to ensure they'll never match us. Pound our enemies in and dust. Remove race for the bomb. Become a war sport. Okay then. Mission complete. After the fall of the Golden City and subsequent destruction of the Paws of the Thunder Tiger, Kurt Force is happy to report that their mission has been successful. Uh, General High Sob Garnet's offensive, though it racked up immense casualties, not really, when the tiger came down on the city, okay, maybe, it's finally broken the enemy's will to fight. But some tribes have melted away into the jungles to continue fighting. The majority of either surrender have been all but annihilated in the last stand in the city. Careforce remain in the far south to conduct civilization and peacekeeping missions, and the administrative and governance functions will be given to the newly formed Southeast Enterprise Territory, a corporate polity funded by SIC, Kieran Holding Corp, and the SSVC, as well as other Kieran Corporations. The asset while address the development of the far south, its markets and resources, lessening the financial and administrative burden of this endeavor on the Kyrian state. Though the situation escalated beyond what we had hoped, we stand victorious and can finally help the locals leap forward into the modern era like we did. A corporate government for a corporate state, where supremacy and political power, the South Sea Enterprise Territory will be established. Oh, cool. Add the ruins of the Golden City, less political power, better consumer goods, less civilian way less war support. Oh, look at this. The South Sea Enterprise Territory. Ruins of the Golden City, like we said, and they have no Oak Street. Hey, okay, cool. Also, we, have, we do have strikes, too. Bounce to the realm. Return the natural... Oh. That's pretty good overall. Yeah, that took a while to do. That was very frustrating. But overall, not bad. I was actually kind of surprised we were actually able to do it. Nice. Anything else? Sure. We do have strikes, though. Yeah, we'll do that one, why not? Uh, yeah, we have widespread strikes, which is really not good for us at all. But we actually managed to do it, so I'm actually really proud of us. It's actually really good. Especially for the first time ever doing this. I don't know how many other people have actually done it at the time of this recording. But uh, we did get some casts as well. Um, in the meantime, I'm going to say, hey guys, you can go home. And you can all convert to now to... Hopefully we don't need these guys again. Back here. Because these guys are looking pretty thick. I'm getting a little worried about these guys around here too. So... Kingdom of India, pretty flippin' thick if I did say so myself. Um, we don't have a lot of consumer goods, do we? We really do not. Of course, we have a lot of uh, strikes. We did that one. Um, yeah. During wartime, it's very likely that even the non-scripted Kieran will be wanting to support at war effort and take up arms in defense of Kiria. It would be a good idea to allow them to challenge forever and form the divisions of territorial volunteers should the need arise. On whose grenadiers? Grena grenades are definitely one of the most useful, albeit dangerous, inventions brought by advancements of warfare. We can use qualified grenadiers who would be able to support our infantry on the battlefield. We just need time to train them to ensure they'll be as efficient and safe as possible. Sure to show swordsmanship, or swordsmanship. Though melee weaponry in most nations were replaced with rifles decades ago, even Kira starts to embrace this change where vanguards are one of the best swordsmayers in the entire world. Instead of abandoning this tradition, we should teach the vanguards how to incorporate their weapons in the hit and gallop tactics. Realm Conscription Ordinance. 
If Tyr's attack, we need enough air power to defend it properly. We'll introduce new laws that allow us to draft a significant chunk of our population to the army, however. Forcing the Kirin to constantly serve is not only the harmonious way, but it will also be the demoralizing to our citizens. Therefore, those laws will only be able to take place during crisis, and our army will be kept as small as possible. Probably. Peace by mobilization. Weapons procurement. But now, as it may sound, the Kirin army needs weapons to fight. One can say a lot of things about the realm during the silence, but its excelling at military production is most certainly not one of them. We'll start by preparing a plan to efficiently develop our military industry and build several uh, weapons factories in key areas. Nice. The artillery branch. The artillery is one of the most important aspects of modern warfare. In the right circumstances, being able to easily shred through enemy soldiers and fortifications, while the destruction it brings is devastating, war is not always allowed for such moral qualms. Investing into the research regarding this weaponry is necessary to ensure Kira's military victories should the need arise. From the Defense Network. Kiri is large and consists of different types of regions. Some of them are almost completely flat, others are mountainous, some are more urban, and others are rural. During a defensive war, we cannot treat this in the same, and so we must prepare separate defensive plans for each of them, capitalizing on their unique characteristics. Army Tanker School. Tanks are another recent, uh, rather recent development. In warfare, they didn't manage to find its way to Kiri during, during, uh, due to the silence. We lack not only the tanks themselves, but also capable personnel able to operate them efficiently. We cannot expect that our enemies will be as far behind as us, so something needs to be changed in this regard. The Vanguard Elite. Ooh. The Vanguards are were and are still are the fastest, deadliest, and most well-trained soldiers in our army. We need to make sure of their centuries of experience and tradition in order to provide significant support for a regular army. Which generally be deadly units, adapted to modernity, still yet representing Kirin traditions. Kirin Esprit de Corps. Our special forces can tip the scales in favor during the war. If we keep their morale high, well, they will perform to their best capability. Therefore, we need to ensure that they are always satisfied with their work and ready to fight for Kyria. And the par partisan anvil. An enemy invasion may penetrate deep in the realm before a counteroffensive can be marshaled. Until then, our savior and forces will delay the invaders as much as possible. Once the tide of battle turns, the guerrillas will pivot to preventing the invaders' retreat and trapping them so that they may be smashed on the partisan anvil by the hammer of our counterattacking armies. And Pacification police. In the event of war, we might be able to force to occupy portions of enemy territory to achieve victory. In that case, we would have to develop methods of handling the local population. We cannot be too harsh to them and make them see us as their enemies, but also be strict enough to make sure they do not disturb our further military operations. Kyrian National Police. Ooh. Very nice. Kyrian Artificers create a special meteoromancing engine that creates a gust of wind behind the ship, making it valuable to use sails instead of conventional motor engines. This engine is a fusion of modern electrical and mechanical engineering and Kirin geomancy and numerology techniques. Cutting edges, geomancy and numerology are primarily a passive pursuit, stuff like divinations and making prophecies, but in the atmospheric displacement propulsion engine, this Kirin thaumaturgical science is used to great effect. The engine of the ship's bowsprit uh, displaces the air in front of the ship, allowing its sails to catch a pressure that bellowed in from behind. It's a kind of indigenous Kyrian and Magitek that will be created by pre-existing characters from different factions of the Civil War, symbolizing what Kyrian unity can accomplish, sort of like the Concord jetliner. The lead developers are Sage Snood, a Kyrian theorist and scholar of geomancy and numerology. Dr. Lucien Shine, an engineer trained in equestrian, and the project is bankrolled by the Fragrance Enterprise with the engine being mounted on a special hull produced by its dockyards. Speech, ceremony, celebration, and the boat launching. Matriarch Rainshine and Christens a bow, gives the boat a name, it's a sleek armor to destroy with three distinctive red and black fo fully batten sails. The sinks of sails give it an impressive flair and impressive intimidating, uniquely Kyrium, but as the downside of increasing the profile to enemy spotters. The ADP is restricted to small craft, maximum destroyer size, because even with the Magnetek sails, cannot propel large and heavy ships. Oh, cool. Alright then. Um, yeah. Her divinity's leg uh, legations. After we do, Kirin National Police. Sure. Why not? You know? Why not? Uh, sure. Start focusing on naval stuff, I guess. Um, we've already built up a lot of roads around here. I guess we can build up these guys, too. You might as well. Since we did uh, make sure that they did s become subjugated to us. Totally by peaceful means. Totally. And we'll build up another refinery, too, because we can. Very nice. Um, so we got all that stuff to do. On who supply supply lines? The vastness of Kira, combined with its dense forests and steep mountains, can make properly supplying troops a logistical nightmare. However, we can mobilize small groups of on hooves supporters that would be in charge of delivering supplies to our troops in difficult areas. They wouldn't be as effective as a truck or train, but they could reach places where those would uh, fail us. Nice. Nice. Left behind snipers. Even if our enemies manage to penetrate to our lands, we can use a small smear 
Marksmere brigades. Left behind, the enemy lines on the occupied territories to ensure that the enemy can't hold onto the occupied land so easily. And show the conquered care that there is still hope. Assault Barding. The Barding commonly used in our army is both highly protective and durable, but its limit it wears movements. However, recently our armor designers came up with a scheme for a new type of Barding that will sacrifice some of its defensiveness for great mobility. A switch to this new armor during assaults would afford our soldiers fast and more aggressive attacks on the enemy line. Strength may be shown by smashing a pot, but a lord of pot shards knows neither love nor honor. It was very naive of me to assume that I was the only Kieran and Kira who the guts would address our Neeric problem. I understand that now thanks to the numerous kind-hearted folks I've met on my travels, but it was also naive of me to fall into the depression and believe that I was only the foul-hearted Kieran in the country today. On an otherwise uneventful train trip, I met a very bad Kieran. Come on down, singing sore. It was very presentable. Wearing his national police uniform and vigorously defending Autumn Blaze from some perceived slight when I encountered him in the parlor car. And as he continued to hold court on the particulars of whatever riot response he commanded, I began to overhear some unpleasant things. Nets, bullet launchers, batons, water cannons, bayonets, sabers, and shotguns. Naked steals, he said, a little too proudly. And that's when I started to realize that he enjoyed his work breaking up these protests, not unlike how I used to enjoy my studies. When I confronted him, he was as calm as could be, like a tour guide answering some common question. Of course, the National Police needed to bear bayonets or brandish shotguns at times, he explained. And they're dangerous, and by definition, unreasonable. Left on control, they're dangerous to themselves and others. Ideally, they can't be stopped through the mildest means possible, but they needed to be stopped no matter what. But it was when I asked them about how often they were using these weapons against Nyrex that I felt my heart hit my stomach. These are weapons for breaking up riots before a transformation occurs, Singing Sword explained. Hitting riders hard and fast with shock and awe, containing the mass of riders, quickly breaking them into smaller groups and suppressing any current who starts to smolder. I have to admit that from his explanations, he seemed brutally effective, and his proud claims that there hadn't been a single Nyrex transformation during one of his crackdowns spoke to that. Of course, if there's if there hadn't been any Nyrex transformations, was his officer perhaps being a little overzealous in all his brutal precautions? Not at least, he assured me, the sickening, charming smile after all. One doesn't put away their umbrella because they aren't getting wet. That's very true. Cool. Mechanized fire support. Mechanized infantry divisions, while causing production maintenance, can be very difficult or um, very useful in the battlefield. Therefore, we should do whatever we can to maximize the potential. Focusing our resources in developing state of the art turreted vehicles is certainly a step in the right direction. Infantry tank kits. While well, tanks are powerful by themselves, they can also be used to support our infantry. Developing small, fast tank kits would allow us to use them alongside hoof soldiers during combat. While infantry tanks are a relatively new concept, they that still have yet to prove itself during the war, we believe they have great potential. Squad weapons development. Military technology does not remain stagnant, but unfortunately, due to the silence, it didn't carry up. We've barely moved on from our cupulises. Some nations have already started incorporating magic crystals into the weaponry. It would be a wise move to invest in uh, research of better, faster, and more reliable weapons for soldiers if we're to keep up with the rest of the world. The Rocketeer Corps. Cool. I think like we've got some research to do as well. Very nice. Very good, too. Um, 3,000 every month. We're doing all right. All right, all right. Throw one of those over there because you can. Overall, not bad. These guys are still trying to kill each other all off. Like, come on. The world's looking pretty okay. Question's looking okay. Griffonian Empire's gotten pretty large. Cooling. Ooh, the Entente right here. Neat. Interesting. Quite interesting. Concord data. Huh? Anti radical front. Oh, the Bombardian Republic, huh? Cool. Water towns and maintenance companies, even though we don't really need maintenance companies, but whatever. Better engineers, of course. Or uh, artificers. Artificers, right? Does that have any resistance here? How are we doing here? Hmm. Libertarianism, huh? Okay. Interesting. I'm doing extra planes. And there you go. Salt parting. And then our divinities legations. Or let's do for land and labor. It's, let's fight together. Why not? Let's see what that one's like. Very good. Um, sure. Land clearance. Land clearance, land clearance, land clearance. Start using a little more command power so we can get more. Oh, oh, us staging stuff. Other than that, there's not much else really here. Oh, mirror and factory, maybe. That'd be good to do, I suppose. But that, the flame of faith. Sure, why not? That apartment, yeah. <coughs> Increases the number of provincial diets, and morality is controlled by the realm and harmony party about plus one. Yeah, more institution stability's not bad too. But we gotta talk about another thing from Mayflower Bloom soon too. Which is good. I have a couple more doctors because you can. Um
Let's see. God dang it, come on. I'm sure we could use some cannons. And nuclear reactors, why not? A cherished friend is a garden of the soul who roots all corruption and decay. For friendship is a plaza, a heart with truth, and the mind craves lives. I have to say that I was not expecting my departure from the Collegium, to resort on the start of my political career, and yet I'm falling asleep with aching hooves as I write this. The rally in Vernon today was standing room only, but I would not have missed it for the world. Uh, well, why not? Screw it. River Lily and I didn't sit in the sidelines like we had before in the Mascot and Chrysanthemum. No, we were front and center, cheering as a Kyrian left de uh declared a grand alliance of its three parties, the Peasants' Union, the Marxist Workers' Party, and the Movement for Modern Kyria. All of them pledged to salute and support each other in the provincial elections and in the morning secretariat. There's plenty of messiness to work out, but these care for all the differences are one, one mind on the core. More rights to more democracy, more attention to the plights of the common Kyrian. Uh, they have the passion of the red, angry fire without the self-destruction urge. Whatever happens, these Kyrian are confident. I feel confident standing near them. River Lily does too. River Lily, I am mayor, I am convinced, must have been sent to me by Concord, because what could have I done to deserve her? Her kindness has pulled me from the hate I felt for my fellow Kieran and for myself, and given me a way back after the rally today. We talked about what we had heard, and we agreed that we should join the movement for a modern Kyria and start supporting them in the next election. Lily told me she was proud of me, and the tears in her eyes told me it was so much for it was, it was for so much more than joining the Sim campaign. <coughs> I would not trade that little smile on her face for all that silks and mascot. I told her that I was sorry for being such a bitter uh, miserable Kieran all the time, and I thanked her for pulling me out of that, but she shook her head and she told me a sweet story about a bright-eyed young scientist freshly arrived at the Collegium. We wrote poetry and loved the sunsets in Vermilion and had such a zeal for helping her country out in this crisis she was sure it was facing. The Kieran she said was a good Kieran and she still is now, only even better. I can't believe her yet, I might have set aside uh, eugenics. I might have abandoned the idea that my fellow Kieran needed to be fixed, but I have to make amends for ever believing in it. Then maybe I can be the Kieran she was describing, Lily may not I think I need forgiveness, but I know that to forgive myself, I have to turn to politics. Yeah, pretty much. Oh, do we lose somebody here? There you go. Helps out our intelligence agency. Even though we don't really need it too much, you know. Goodbye. Yay. Do we have... Nope. Fine, you can have a milli. So we do have an aggression pact. But at this point, they, we, they're not going to attack us, so... I think we'll be okay, overall. Down to the realm, the Vermilion and Kyrian army, wow. Look at all the little benefits we get here. Plus 1% war support, not much. Ground, infantry division attack, ground attack factor. A lot of little small things. Vanguards, attack, Valiant's attack. Recon and signal team company, huh? Cool. The National Plenum of the Provinces. Very nice. The Flame of Faith. On Harmony, all this explains, this entry explains Autumn Blaze's philosophy of harmony in the context of the Kieran net political system. Harmony isn't just peace or stability, though these are important, but you can have stability without harmony, stability and force to oppression. This was a silence. True harmony doesn't mean a uniformity or conformity. Harmony means a positive balance between two or more differing forces when they work together in unison, while those differences are the very thing that makes them stronger. Because they either cover each other's weakness or amplify one another's shared strengths. As long as multiple different forces work together towards a common goal, uh, and then they're stronger that together than they're apart, that's harmony. The tolerance is the differences, recognition of mutual interests and values, affirmation of shared community and identity, um, more common than not, and collective effort towards common goals. A symphony can't just have an inst one instrument, one melody, on scale, one scale, one note. It's collective and cooperative effort to flourish in unison. So I'll take part in this great symphony that is curated to play the music of our history. See Kyle, I guess. I don't know. Am I playing too much TNO? Probably. Mm, oh, there you go. There you go. 
Not bad. Institutional left. Sure, why not? So those are all done. Uh, I still want to get some more factories here. Research stuff. Sure, why not? Logistics? We like logistics. Monopulse radar, yes. There you go, I must do that too. Hmm. It's not bad. Surface visibility, huh? Capital ships. Uh, the vertical one's okay. It's not great. I mean, I don't want to lose losing the consumer goods. It's good for naval research, but still. Lack of resource penalties is good too. Uh, less sub detection rating, fleet designer. Let's have. I don't like that one either, though. A Kirin cannot buy by their own will be lost in darkness, for your heart blazes as a beacon if you only see it. The Nairic State is not anything special about Kirin. I mean, it obviously is, but it represents something common to all creatures. Even a mouse of trap will bite the hoof of its captor. When a creature gives into despair, uh, and there's only two things that can break it, anger and hope. That's true of zebras, deer, and griffins, as is, it is of Kirin. When Kirin gives into anger, we become Nairic, but the same violent passion can fail into any creature's heart. If we want to avoid them, we have to provide them hope to start understanding them and understanding that today. River Lily and I spent today making our first real contribution to the movement for modern Kirio. The canvas of canals of Vernon, passing out flyers and explaining the party position on everything from civil rights to reform to the rumored proposals for a new cannery complex. It's surprising and exciting how well informed the common Kirin is these days, and Lily and I found ourselves in a few passionate discussions. I'm proud to say that I kept my coolsy traveled around with a group of MMK activists and tried to gain up support. Elections for the provincial diet are closer than they feel, and the left-wing parties I found myself so suddenly attached to need to win, to big, win big in the western and southeastern or southern prefectures to have influence in the morning secretary. It's exciting having such an important goal being surrounded by like-minded and brilliant Kirin all working for that goal. After stumping all day, one of the activists I was with pulled me aside and suggested I should run for office somewhere. I was flabbergasted. But she insisted. Apparently, my passion was really on display on the canals of Burden today, and that what got me thinking. If Kieran nearly burned before the silence, it was because. Oh, we Kieran failed to build a society that did not left tens of thousands of Kieran destitute and desperate. And for a century, we burned, buried our heads in the sand to avoid confronting that failure again. But now I have a chance of pro prosperity for all, with the benefit of hindsight to guide us and the fruits of modernity to carry us forward. We won't ever read away the instinct to uh, lash out when there's no other option, whatever what I was thinking with um, that. But we can do our best to make sure that Kiria blooms for every Kiria. My journey uh, uh, across Kiria is over. One can never see everything, but I've seen what I needed to. I can thank River Lily for that. I do love that mare. We set off from Vermilion. Apart from the capital, there's only one great city of Kiria that Lily and I didn't visit because I already knew it. It's the closest thing to a hometown in this country. Tomorrow, I'm packing my bag, catching a train, I'm going home, going to put my hoof in the ring in Radiance. Cool. Now we go for Egbert. And any person? Sure, why not? Give more things we do here. Which is fine, whatever. Um, yeah, might as well wait. Bicycle shop guns. Firearms can someone get eat costly in production, which can strain carriers' resources. Our designers and artificers believe that simplifying the designs can reduce the production costs and help us save some resources so we can use them elsewhere. We actually give this idea support as it is likely to benefit us substantially in the long term. Maneuver tanks. While our tanks can quite reach uh, easily, can reach quite impressive speeds, our artificers believe that there's still room for improvements. If we reduce their weight and improve their engines, we'll certainly outmaneuver our enemies with ease. Ah, oh, slightly better. I guess we'll do that one then. Oh, what is this? Establishing delegation at Baganta? Oh. It's a little different. Okay. Kind of cool. There you go. One, two, anyways. Because you can.
And we'll do uh, which one? Collective Laissez Faire. Okay. Interesting. Vanguard turreted combat vehicle. And then two Rages Kirin. Modify the balance of the realm. Attack and core territory. Teach them temperance. Well, defense, stability. I like that one. I guess we'll probably just teach him temperance then. And designated mark smears. Training snipers can be incredibly beneficial for our army. He's able to spot enemies and attack them from great distances. Giving our soldiers room to breathe. But training mark smears and incorporating them into their divisions will gain a significant edge of battle. The Alpine Corps. Our armed vermilion are on our borders with the deer and llamas in the north. Kira is covered in steep mountains. While they already are replaceable for defensive purposes, trained mountaineer corps could use them for, to our advantage for daring attacks. Uh, unlike our enemies, we know of these mountains, and it's time to make use of it. The Parachute Rangers. The advent of aviation gave us access to many new tactics that were previously not possible. One of them using specialized banners that would drop behind enemy lines or wreak havoc. If we focused on training such divisions and creating new ways to supply them better, it allowed them to operate on enemy territory more efficiently. Burning Detachments. Fire has always been one of the most important elements of Kirin nature, but it's usually associated with near state and its dangers. Nowadays, however, we can access its power in a weaker but much more controlled way. He's the newly developed incendiary lance known as Molten Tongue. We'll be able to unleash the flames against our enemies more easily and safely than before. And we're all self defense syndicate, so. Honestly, I think I might just end it there because there's not. I think that's pretty much it. That's everything there, as far as I can tell. Um, there's uh, focuses we need to finish, but for the most part. Uh, like, I guess maybe we'll do this one first before we end it, just, just in case to see if there's anything left. I don't think there is, but, uh, this is, I think, I'm not sure on YouTube, but, uh, one of the, one of the first few, if not first one, uh, video playing as the Realm of Kyria, uh, before, I guess, everyone else can. Like I said earlier, this is a preview build, the title says it's a preview build, it's a preview build, but, uh, yeah. Um, I actually thoroughly enjoyed it, obviously, it's not perfect yet, but the devs are fantastic. I love the developers of Equestria War. They are just so good. So good. We are so blessed to have fantastic developers for this uh, for this mod and whatnot. So, um, yeah, always, 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 consistently fantastic, great developers for Equestria War. Literally, some of the best in the entire Hardcore like, community, and probably I don't know about gaming community, but pretty close in the gaming community. How much love they pour into this mod is always fantastic. Always, always, always. So let's finish up that one uh, focus first, because I doubt there's anything else here. Because I've already pretty much done everything um, that's possible. Nice, 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 nice. I do love what they have here. The Kowloon National Resource Allocation, I love it. The Rome Development, interesting. Vermilion and Kyrian Army, not bad. Grand Gulf Onward is a fantastic thing. Love it, love it, love it. Um, but I think we're just going to end it there once we do this one. So, teach them temperance, and if there's anything there left, well, I guess we'll have to know and see very soon. Uh, oh, we actually have some small air wings too. One, two, three. Uh, give them time to train, why not? We have f full fuel, even though we didn't really train a navy. It's fine. Just training, you know, I guess, till they die. Now. Um, but yeah. Roma Cure is a lot of fun. There's a lot of different paths, like I said earlier in the campaign. I would like to try a lot of the different paths uh, in the future. Once it, the mod is fully updated for everybody, and I can just try out like 18, I think there's 18 different paths in total. I don't know if I'll ever be able to try all 18, because I'm going to probably. Uh, screwed up from here time to time, but uh, I I'm really excited what to see what else can come up with Rome of Kyrian. Actually go supremacist like I originally wanted to do, I guess, with this campaign. Uh, go eventually go communist, non-aligned, uh, harmonist, and see what happens when you really don't actually make it through the silence. So You never know what's going to happen. You really just don't. And I got another week just in case. Oh, I just love seeing how many benefits he gets from this. It's fantastic. Rain shine's pretty good. The way of fire. Oh boy. Uh, we still have the court here, but, you know. Oh well. But, I guess that's going to be it for us here for this campaign. If you enjoyed it, please consider leaving a like. Please let me know what you thought of it in the description, uh, in the comments below. Uh, check out my description and just join my Discord link if you haven't already. And I will see you tomorrow in another campaign. Thanks for watching. Have a great, great, great Realm of Kyria rest of your day.